It's road at Tussock something that I've been on ever since we first started there in the early 80s. And uh, it's been a growing problem. It's continued to grow from just a little patch. When we first found Tussock, we just found a patch about as big as a tennis court. We thought, oh, gee, this is no good. So we got to, and, um, and the first time we had a quick spray, so we just sprayed it with a quick spray. Task force, nothing else with it, just straight task force. And, and, and then next year there was another lot. And, and of course, but the stock had already had the seed of that in their, in their, in their feet and around their bottoms. So that had already been spread across a lot of our country, which we weren't aware. And then it started to come up all over the place. So then you, you, you're spot spraying from then on. We did some booming in the early days but found that it killed too many of the natives. It, it, it basically annihilates all your, weep, all your wallaby grasses, all your weeping grasses, and it tends to leave you uh, a lot of the grasses that, that are unproductive. So we, we've totally gone away from that. We've stuck with spot spraying. We've got two quick sprays. Um, we, uh, if we're spraying with the quick sprays, I always turn the pressure gauge off, so it just sprays the, the pumping so it's a low volume. Otherwise you finish up with a big dead area because you, you know everywhere we spray, we don't spray just task force, it's round up and task force or, or whatever because you're spraying all through the year and you want to know what you've got. For, for the actual, for me working, I've got a, a, a Viking or a gator as most people call them. I have a, a drawer on the side and I have a, a pump up, not one of those, just a pump up eight litre one. I have one on them and one on my four wheeler. So wherever I go, I spray it all year round as I go. You know, whenever I see a plant, I spray it. Or if I'm in a paddock and I see a plant, I've got nothing, I'd leave me jumper or a coat or a, something off the seat or something else so I could find it when I go back. Otherwise, you mightn't find it. Um, I find it's important to spray all year round because a, a lot of neighbours, I find, start to spray when it's starting to seed. And that's a waste of time because all that seed's there. So if you, if you haven't got it sprayed by the time it's seeded, well, you've got to think of something else. If it's in a real little good little paddock, I'd, I'd dig it out or cut it off and take the seed and still spray the plant. But I don't dig any with a mattock. I stopped doing that some years ago because most plants, that it doesn't matter how big it are, would have had some seed on it. So if you dig it out, you leave a seed bed for seed for plants to grow. So I stopped mattock work years ago, not because of laziness, I carry a mattock, but because I found after going back there, plants growing where I disturbed the ground. Please ask me questions. So Peter, um, this time of year, do you think it's, it's a good time to spray and why? Particularly good time this time of year because with your stock of eat the grass, grasses down most of your country, you can find the plant. You'll get twice as much spray this time of year as what you'll get done in the springtime because you're not trying to look through grass looking for it. Because your plants stand out and you can get to them easier and do, do them. I don't use dye. I use Roundup and, and so forth all the time with it um, because I carry it mixed up all the time, you know, ready to go. I spray around them. I know different, different people spray just a little bit in the centre, but we've kept on spraying. I still spray around the plant because it kills, because there's, if there's going to be seed there, there'll be some there. At least you've got a couple of years, you know, with the task force on the seed. Um, and we just keep at it all the time. We just Whenever we, we're going, we're spraying it. Well, you know how you engage the, 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 the pressure gauge to give you higher pressure? I don't engage it, I leave it off. It'll pump enough at that point to not spray everywhere. So instead of getting a patch as big as this table did, you only get a little patch and it puts out less, and, and also your spray goes a lot further. You, you use not less stuff. It goes more than twice as far. But in my gator, I have a, I have a, a, a pump up, uh, eight litre one all the time mixed up and I'd carry some in a drench drum mixed up too if I'm out mustering or doing things. I also have another tank in there which would have graze on brush off mix in it for, for a blackberry or something else I wanted to do as I went. So we try and do as much as you can as you're going, briar or something like that. Dye, I know it's neighbours that use dye, it gets all over everything, that's the other thing I don't like about it, it, just, it gets on everything, your boots, your clothes, your truck, your vehicle, and I just never liked that, so I've always done a system without that. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying that's just me. But if, if you really, seriously, people need to really take this as a very serious weed, because I know areas near us, the country, you won't, you, it'll cost more to, re, to get it right than what the country's worth. Nearly every time you find a tussock, you'll have seeded. 
because a plant that's a reasonable plant that starts through the winter months or through the autumn months, mostly they start when you push your paddocks a bit tighter. They start through the months, come around through the summer, they'll seed that autumn. Normally they seed in the springtime, but they'll seed out of season just fine. It's only maybe 20 or 30 seeds up on the top, little tiny fine ones up there. You can hardly see them unless you look hard on that seed beds there. I've just gone back and found that there's, like, you get more growing there than what you didn't win. You won that year, but you didn't win in the long run. So, so I got sick of that. I try to learn off things I make mistakes on, which I do plenty of. The, the main difference is I started off in the first place spraying too late. The big different thing that I did wrong in the beginning was I started spraying, oh, well, they said they start to seed in, uh, uh, up in November. Oh, I start in September. Or well, I used to finish up and leave until after shear, and we all shore in the spring those days. And you'd wait till you got your shear and done, and you'd start your tussock. But by the time you got halfway through it, half it was seeded. So it was no good. So I had to change my system, and now I started doing it all the time, carting it with me. And I make a bigger effort in the next short period, I'll make a big effort to get across as much of my country as I can. Now my system, as Craig probably knows, or he comes and goes at times, is I start on our better country first, work through it, work back through the, the rubbish country. Now, if I'm gonna have any seed, I want the seed out in the rough stuff, where it's not gonna do me too much harm, too much loss of production. It travels 20 to 30 kilometers. It's a, it's a regional one, uh, and everyone in an area on a big windy day, 10 kilometres would be nothing for tussock to grow, to blow. Um, so, you know, if it's there, everyone's getting it. So most people around in this area would have some tussock going on their place. If they haven't found it, they haven't looked. It's a really serious problem. People need to, to look at it. When you were digging the tussock out, did you ever try planting past your seed in the area where you dug out? I think that'd be a good idea, but I'm, I've got to say I've too many paddocks to get to that. I respect that, but uh, I do that, and I've had success. Look, I, don't, I don't, wouldn't doubt, the improvement obviously is, as Phil will tell you, the, the, the best solution of course is to improve your paddocks, but as I said, we've got more country going native than not these days because the cost of improvement. So you're improving your better country that you can improve, and you've got large areas of country that you're not improving. We've got some country that we don't, we just run sheep on, we adjust sheep on, that's terribly badly affected. And the economics, I don't know what'll happen with it in the future because it doesn't make enough money to support a, uh, that sort of structure. It'll need something doing, or how it'll happen, I don't know. Um, we're endeavouring to keep ground cover, but as we, you would all be aware, and you are too, Hunter, the kangaroo problem's huge these days. So in some country, you can shut it up and there's no more feed in that paddock, you've got to shut up than what there is in the one you get the stock in. So uh, uh, that's become a major import of the problem now. It's increased it quite a lot in recent years. So that's added to the, the hassle of that. But the ground cover is important to try and keep. Because as Malcolm Campbell used to say, the, the top man on it, he always said shading kills more tussock than, than spraying. He believed if you can keep enough, enough ground cover there and shading, it'll destroy more tussock than the spraying. I don't know where you've heard him say that, but. You've heard him say it. I've heard him say it plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs>